What is up everybody? Back again with a new video today. And what's today's video? It's basically gonna be a basic how to bag the front of your truck, specifically a Nissan hard body. But the concept works pretty much with all trucks besides Ford Rangers because they have I-beam bump suspension and but other than that, you pretty much do the same steps. Anyways, the front is on the ground now. Uh, the back will be getting done hopefully in a month or two, along with air management. But further ado, let's get to it. The most important thing to start off with any sort of project is to get your vehicle on level ground. So as you see, I'm backing up into the shop uh, to get it nice and level. If you don't have level ground, um, try to make your truck sit as level as possible. So as you see, jacking up the truck using some uh, 2x4 stands I built a long time ago, stacked up front because I really wanted to get the truck as high as I could. And then I'm lifting up the rear and I'm going to put some jack stands underneath the axle. Now you can see here, I'm starting to disassemble the front end. Now that was the tension rod. And now I am taking off the upper control arm bolt. Because we need to get everything disassembled here. So once we got that going, we're gonna take off the sway bar. Now bagging your truck, you're gonna have to remove the sway bar on a Nissan hard body. But as long as you have two different separate airlines going to each bag, you really don't get much body roll. So now you can see under the frame, there's a couple of mounts on either side to take the sway bar completely off. So we'll just undo those and then pull the sway bar out. It's a little bit of a pain, but you can weasel it out. So now you see here, this is a 10 millimeter tapered wrench or a brake wrench, I'm not sure the exact name. Uh, and I'm taking the brake lines off. There's really no way to av avoid it. Um, so just do know when you put back to get, when you put your suspension back together, you're going to have to bleed your brakes. So pulling the stock brake tab off that holds it all together, pull it off. Let's use some vice grips and then your brake line should come right out. So next up is trying to get the spindle off. So we're going to have to take out all the cotter pins to whatever's attaching. So this is our steering linkage. So we'll get that undone. And then I like to put my nuts haha, back on to everything so I don't lose stuff or just put it in a bag, your choice. Take the cotter pin out of the lower ball joint. And actually, my spindles were really easy to get off. I just did a couple light taps on the threads and they pulled right off. Other times, you're going to have to use a pickle fork. In this case, it just pulls right off. So now we're just going to take apart the shock, lower mount, undo the top mount. Uh, the Shock will try to rotate on you, and there's a little tiny notch up at the top of the shock, so you can grab that with some, uh, I like to use vice grips, but anything, a proper wrench would probably be better. Now we're just going to take off the upper control arms. These are my tube uppers that I sell on my website, roadiefabrication.com. These allow more room for bag placement, and always keep note, they have a shim behind the control arm and there's normally a thicker one and a thinner one so be sure to remember if it was in the front or the back because that helps with alignment. So now we're going to begin to take the torsion bar out. Now right here you can't really see much what I'm doing. There is a jam nut and the regular nut and this is how you can lower your vehicle normally. But we're going to take it all the way off and now you see me trying to take off one of the pitman arms. I believe that's what it's called and I made that look pretty easy. Uh, the back of the torsion bar has a clip ring that I ended up just cutting off because it was a pain in the ass. So you have to cut that clip ring off to pull the whole unit off. And now you can see the control arm come off. And lastly is the front of the tension rod. As you can see, mine are scraped to hell. But get someone hold that for you and then get those bushings out of there because 
what we will be doing, we will no longer need those. And now comes the fun part. Uh, I recommend a Sawzall. I really do not like using cutoff wheels, but if you have to, I had to a couple times um, just to get the job done because they're they can be really dangerous. So I try to use a Sawzall as much as possible. Um, if you had a, a handheld plasma cutter, this would probably be really well, or even a acetylene torch. Um, so I just worked at it, beat it around with a hammer to get to everything I needed, and eventually I got it all off. Now, I didn't record, but got the frame all cleaned up with all the tabs. That took a while, and now you see me here making a cardboard template to fill that hole. Now, on the hard bodies, when you remove this stuff, it's a small hole, so you're going to have to make a filler piece. So I made a quick cardboard template, cut it out of 3 16 plate, and now I'm going to weld it in. So now I'm working on the lower control arms. First off is to remove any paint or dirt from the areas you'll be welding to. And uh, as you can see, I cut out the middle part of my control arm and you're gonna wanna cut off your steering stop. Not all the way, just part of it so your bag will not rub on it and cause uh, a tear and you know break your bag. So see me cutting it off. And then I'm going to come back with a flap disc and smooth it all out so there's no sharp, sharp edges. And here is my lower control arm triangulation kit. Now, the ones that I will be selling will be slightly different than these, but this triangulates your lower control arm for the Nissans because uh, they use the tension rod to stay stable. And when you remove that, you can't just run a lower control arm like that. So you have to widen it to have better support. So you... Uh, use a rod through the whole thing so you know that you're on your pivot point and weld her in. Now, as you can see my triangulation kit I have a built-in shock location. Here is the lower bag plate which I previously measured out so I already know exactly where it needs to be. So I'm just gonna weld her in on the tops and the underside. And this brings back the support where I cut it out. And the reason I cut that spot out is so I could have room to adjust that uh, lower back bolt. Now, uh, one thing that people always miss, I think, is um, working in a clean area. So I'm just going to sweep up all the debris and shavings and all that garbage and crap and get a nice clean work area. And now we're going to be installing the lower control arms, or at least getting the brackets welded up. So uh, I literally put the arm back on the truck, and I made these plates with some cardboard first, and then uh, cut them out of steel. So by doing this, I can just pinch the tabs onto the triangulated arm and swing them up. And as you can see, I already bared the frame for welding. So now, while holding, while holding it into place, I'm going to throw a couple tack welds on. Make sure everything's going to work out, line up, and pivot properly. Because you have to have the same pivot point, otherwise it just wouldn't work. So, get it tacked up here. Make sure it, uh, the control arm is pivoting nicely. I think I burned my leg right there. And once you are confident with the placement, just weld her on in. And I weld them on all sides, have maximum strength. It's a little bit of a pain in the ass to weld under like that, but you gotta do it. That's why I try to get the truck as high as possible. Now, as you see here, I am uh, installing the upper shock mount and I measured my shock fully collapsed and that's where I'm putting the arm. So I brought up the lower control arm at full drop and I'm making sure I have the clearance for the shock to travel full drop. That way I am not pushing the shock into itself. 
So once I got that cleared, I'm gonna test her out and weld her up. Now I did not record the upper bag placement, but what you wanna do is drop your suspension all the way. So as if you were laid completely out and the a standard bag is around three inches at a collapsed height. So you wanna give yourself three inches from your bottom bag bracket to your top bag bracket. And once you figure it out that, you can tack her in, weld her in, test her, and make sure she's working all good. So once we got everything welded up, got to throw some paint on it, and the day after, assemble it. And it's just the reverse process of taking it all apart. So you can see here, the bag look, looks nice, sits in there good. The upper control arm has fairly good room. Like I said, those give more room to the bag and the ball joint. Got the shock bolted in, you see how that works. And also welded in a new brake tab. You can see over there on the side. So, overall pretty good. And I did not record um, bleeding the brakes, but make sure you do that. Make sure you put new cotter pins in all your bolts. I use nylon lock nuts on everything because it's just safer that way for vibration and such and right now it's just on a straighter valve on a t and i'm just going to air her out i mean it is only 17 so she only tucks a little bit of rim as you can see it gets about mm, i haven't measured but i would say a good eight to ten inches of lift in the front and yes tucking nicely And that's pretty much how you bag the front of a truck in a nutshell. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it kind of gave you a little bit of knowledge on what to expect when you're bagging the front of a truck. Um, Time-wise, if you're an experienced uh, fabricator, welder, cars of knowledge, you should be able to do it in a weekend. Uh, that's if you're working really hard, maybe have another person helping you. It took me, let's see, it took me, I disassembled the truck on Friday. Uh, fabrication was Saturday and Sunday. And then I just had to wait for the paint to dry and I assembled it Monday. So it took me two full days and two half days. So three days if you're working on the good. If you have a friend, like I said, you should be able to do it in a weekend. Anyways, the front is on the ground. I drove it around and it seems to be driving pretty good. So I'll keep you guys updated on that. And as far as everything else, uh, thank you guys as always. Like if you enjoyed this. Comment if you want to leave a comment and subscribe if you haven't done already. So, other than that, keep on trucking. Peace out.